same question. And how could you possibly have the nerve to call me here? What in heaven's name are you talking about? And what are you doing home? Spencer told me that you are still on that trip. Personally, I am very happy that you called because I have been waiting to give you a piece of my mind. <laughs> seems to know I'm home, but I am. I thought you were on a cruise to South America or someplace like that. Uh, well, the rules aren't quite that generous. I have to stay here. What rules? I am so glad you called me. Spencer wouldn't even tell me where you were in Washington. I wanted to get a hold of you to tell you what I thought of you. What in heaven's name are you talking about? I'm talking about the way you just abandoned me. Abandon you? I knew you weren't there, so I just went off Didn't to... you care about what happened to me? Well, of course I care, but there's very little I could do about it. You could have stayed here and supported me. Instead, you just ran off to be with your stupid friends. You know, I don't understand any of I this. I needed you. I needed you. You've always been like my mother. A mother just doesn't run off when her kid's in trouble. And now you're trying to make me feel guilty, and I have no reason to be. In any case, we can talk about all this tomorrow. Tomorrow? You're going to come home? Yes, that's why I called, to ask Spencer to pick me up at the airport. I should be there around noon. And then we can talk over this whole thing. All right, good. I'll talk to you tomorrow, then. Bye. You no, know, it is just so fascinating being in a real police station. And you know, Calvin, you look different in these surroundings. Oh, different how? Well, when Star first introduced us backstage in New York, I don't know, you just didn't look like a cop. Well, sometimes you can't tell a cop from a civilian until he puts the cuffs on you, or she, for that matter. But tell me, Samantha, what was so important that you came all the way to Monticello from New York? Well, actually, I was on my way to Springfield. I have family there, and I was going to visit them, but being so close, I thought I should come by and see you. About something important? Yes, I think it's very important. Is it about Star? Yes. And I hope you don't think that I'm interfering in your lives. I mean, that's the last thing I want to do. Look, you have my undivided attention, so why don't you just get on with it, okay? Well, the first thing that you have to understand is that Star and I are the best of friends. We have been ever since I became her understudy. Yes, I, uh, I see. Well, we share everything, including our problems. And, well, last week, Something happened, and... Oh, I feel like such a traitor telling you this, but I just can't stop thinking about it because... Well, you know Star, how she is about her performing. She'll go right on doing that strenuous role. Is she role. sick? I mean, did, did she injure herself? Is that what you're trying Not to tell exactly. me? exactly. Look, I remember what I saw in that show. I remember those leaps across the stage, all that acrobatic dancing. Yes, that's what worries me. She'll go right on doing that, right up until the day she has the baby. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell you like that. Are you saying that Star is pregnant? Yes, Calvin. But please, don't tell her that I told you. I promised her that I wouldn't. When we went to the doctor and, and she said that... She found out the truth. She didn't want me to tell the producer, not you, not anyone. Oh, God. I'll probably lose my best friend for doing this, but rather the friendship than her. She could have called me. She should have told me something. But you know why she didn't? She knew that you would ask her to quit the show, to come back home. And that's exactly what you should do, Calvin. I mean, it's her first baby, right? And you want it to be healthy, don't you? Yes, yes, of course. And she doesn't have to worry about her role. I'm ready to step in at any time at all. 
queen's in check? Why can't you leave that poor woman alone? <laughs> All right. How about this? Oh, I'd be fine if my knight weren't here. Ooh, thanks for the warning. Oh, no, you two haven't even started to get dressed well, I, yet. What's the matter? It's not that. Oh, it is like... Uh, listen, um... We better get ready. We uh, better quit this, okay? Uh-huh, I knew you were going to give up. Come on, one more move. Well, all right, if you insist. Checkmate. You made my big mouth. Well, I guess I've run out of excuses for not getting into that monkey suit. Well, how do I look? Oh, Jody, you look fantastic. Uh, if you want a second opinion, I agree. You do. You look beautiful, huh? I, I just have one question. Do you think this necklace goes with this... Sure, yeah. Gavin and I saw this at an antique store this afternoon, and, uh, well, it didn't cost that much, so I guess it isn't of any great value. Don't let her fool you. She spent most of her first week's paycheck on that thing. But, well, you're the one who pointed it out to me. I said you reminded you of the necklace in the picture. Oh, well, now I know why it looks so familiar. Yeah. Well, it's not the same. I mean, I compared them. Well, I think it looks fine, Jody. although I don't know how smart it was to spend your whole week's salary. Gavin huh? is exaggerating. It only cost a hundred dollars. Well, I think it looks great, and so do you. Thank you. Okay, now you two, please go. All right, all right, we're going, we're going. All right, but I may have to ask someone to help me with my time. We will worry about that later. Just get dressed. Yeah. Oh, boy. You really do look lovely, oh, Jody. Thanks to you for picking out the dress and paying for it. But don't worry, now that I'm working, I'm going to give you back every cent. Now, don't get carried away, wage earner. Listen, do you think it was silly of me to buy this necklace? No, of course not, if you really wanted it. Well, I guess I wouldn't have wanted it so much if it didn't remind me of the cameo in the portrait. Oh, look at that. It really do sort of look it alike, It does. Huh? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm just so fascinated by this painting. I just wish I knew more about it. Well, there is a way that we can find out more. How? Well, I told you about Miles and me going to the Endicott's gallery. Yeah, but she said they really couldn't tell you anything about the painting except that it was old. Yes, but they made another suggestion. They said that if we left the painting there for a couple of days, they knew an expert who might be able to tell you more about its provenance. Uh, what, what does that mean? You know, its source, who painted it and where and when. And who the model was? Well, I doubt if they could be that specific, but we didn't want to leave it there without your permission, so don't be surprised if Mr. Endicott or Grace approaches you on the subject. <laughs> There, just lift it up. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Pretty, aren't they? Yes, miss. Oh, I hope the caterers aren't late. Father gets so upset when things aren't done on time. They're already here. Oh, good. Why don't you go make sure they're doing their job? If I could just ask you one thing, Miss Endicott. Uh-huh. I wondered if you'd mind if I, uh didn't attend the party tonight. Suggest something like that. Are you ill? No, Miss Endicott. Well, then there's no other excuse worth mentioning. You know we need you at a time like this. Well, since you hired additional help... That I... doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. It's your job to supervise that help, along with your other duties. Now, you're our bouncer, Joe. You know that. If one of our guests to become rowdy... Not much chance of that happening, Miss Endicott. What would my father say? He'd be terribly upset. You must have a reason for making such an unusual request. It's, uh, because of the girl. The one who's coming to the party tonight? Yes. Leonie Travis's daughter. We do not want that woman's name mentioned in this house again. Do you understand? Sorry. And there's no reason why her daughter's presence in this house should be an excuse for you to just disappear i just rather not see it that's all <sighs> well you're being foolish joe there's nothing to worry about she doesn't connect us to her mother in any way i just thought it'd be best that's all and that's your only reason because you don't want to face this girl yes but you've no reason to be afraid of her do you no. Is there something you haven't told us about your trip to Springfield? You're not keeping something from us. No, Miss Endicott. Nothing.
I'll see you later, Joe. You gotta confess what you've done wrong. You gotta tell somebody. Somebody has got to say it's okay. It's okay, Leone. You didn't mean it. Somebody's got to forgive you. My daughter, maybe, had huh, Joe? My little girl. <laughs> I need my pillow now, Joe. Yeah, Leone. You need it. like you're becoming a regular customer around here, Miss... <sighs> Sorry, your last name escapes me. Fulton. Like the steamboat. And the fish market. Uh, well, folks, what can I get you? Coffee. 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 Sure. Well. <clears throat> okay. What's up, Smiley? Where are the urgency? <clears throat> First of all, this is got to be strictly between the three of us, okay? Nobody else, not Johnny, not Jimmy, not Spencer, nobody else, just we three. All right, you said you wanted to talk about the bail money. Yeah, the bail money that is rapidly disappearing. Okay, how much have we got left, Smiley? Not half. There's nothing Not Nothing? What? No, no you, you cannot be serious. You said we were going to talk him into jumping bail, and then we put it out to give the money back. Hey, you know, I, you're telling us that there's nothing to give back? Bad luck, all right? Oh, so all you mean your horses ran out of the money. That's not important now. I got an idea, and with it, we're gonna make more money than we'll be able to spend the next 20 years. Nice phone call for you, Smiley. Excuse me, it's probably a bookie asking to see if you want to lose any more money. Hey, good luck, man. Not too happy. You better take your call, Smiley. <sighs> yeah, who's this? It's Spencer Varney. I have a real tough one for you to solve, mastermind. Mrs. Geraldine Saxon is coming home tomorrow morning. What do you recommend? Well, if she's coming home, you just what you gotta do, and you gotta do it now, Spencer. So, Mitzi, is that all there is to the story, or is there more? No, no, I don't think I want to hear any more. You know, probably if I just stop talking about it, I'll stop thinking about it, you know? I don't think that's the way it works. It's supposed to help you to get these things off your mind. Now, you were telling me something about um, a surprise at this fake hearing. You know, Dee Dee, I'm uh, probably really overreacting to this whole thing. I mean, you know, it's still a joke, right? <laughs> Mitzi, this is a very elaborate joke. But uh, we didn't hurt her. I mean, uh, that's the point, isn't it? As long as nobody gets hurt, I'm not worried about it. I don't know. I just don't know. Hi, Calvin. Hi, Mitz. Hi, Dee. Dee. Hi. I was hoping I'd find the two of you here. Uh, hey, y'all, uh, maybe you guys would like to be alone, huh? No, Mitzi, that's okay. You don't have to. Um, do you what I'll go out of my nose. Thank you, Mitzi. Dee, Dee, can I ask you a question? Sure. Just as long as I can ask you one. About that pretty girl that I met in your office today. You know, that one who's uh, a friend of Star's? Yeah, well, she's uh, she's not a friend of Star. She's her uh, understudy. Oh. <clears throat> Calvin, what's the matter? Do you have that letter I gave you this morning? The letter to Star? Oh, my goodness, Calvin. I, I forgot to mail it, and I promised you that I would. Oh, I'm so sorry. But you see, what happened is that I ran into Mitzi. I was... Um... I think uh, it 
It shouldn't be mailed, Tini. I mean, not right now. Judge Curtis, however, dismissed the class action by the six women as frivolous, saying that the very nature of their profession excluded them from the discrimination code. And now here's a special report from Hugh Adams. This is the grand jury room of the Monticello Criminal Court, where only moments ago the grand jury returned its verdict in the case of Mrs. Raven Whitney, the widow of the late multimillionaire, who was accused in the shooting death of actress Jinx Avery. The verdict? Bad news for the beautiful young widow. She has been indicted for murder in the first degree. Oh, my God. It's happening. I'm sorry, Mrs. Whitney. Spencer gonna put me on trial for murder <sighs> they're gonna send me back to jail I can't stand this he lied now why didn't my car say that he lied Mrs. Whitney <clears throat> what are you doing I am gonna go see my car right now I have to talk to him face to face please wait no 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 I don't want you to take me I don't want to be recognized uh, I'm gonna take this small car 